Hi everyone, welcome back. So Tesla's unveiled a second generation Optimus humanoid robot, a marked improvement over the stiff Android that awkwardly shuffled across the stage at the EV Makers AI event last year. In a video shared on Tesla's CEO Elon Musk's social media platform X, Tesla Optimus Generation 2 can now be seen flexing its individual fingers and hands, walking around the company's factory hall, doing squats and picking up eggs without cracking, without breaking the eggs. That's, uh, that's quite extraordinary. It's not easy to program a robot to handle eggs. You've got to understand this is really significant. It's a great step in what Tesla is trying to accomplish with the humanoid robot and what they've been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. The first, the first robot prototype was announced in uh, September last year, I believe. Now, that's incredible. The fact that they've been able to do this much in less than two years, that's really remarkable. The video concludes with two of the robots raising their hands while club music plays and a demonstration of robots' very muscular dance moves. While plenty of the questions remains about the robot's real-world applications and capabilities, how the company is planning to integrate AI tech as promised. It's a noticeable upgrade over what the company has previously shown off. But whether any of these humanoid robots will be able to replace human workers at any time soon remains to be seen. So let's just check out the video for ourselves. It's not a very particularly long video, but it is quite incredible to look back at the Bumblebee version of the robot. The generation one in march this year that was just march this year compared to what they have right now is getting closer and closer to the vision that they initially had and my first impression when i saw this thing was well it certainly looked quite similar to what you'd see in sci-fi movies but look at the intricacies the waste of, of how the of how the bot is moving it's just swaying from side to side you can clearly tell that this technology took a lot of engineering to pull off. Mankind is giving birth to a new life form and it's quite incredible. It's what we've um, envisioned for many years. It's what we envision for many decades now. Finally, with companies like Tesla and Boston Dynamics, they're getting quite a lot of good results in robotics development. And because of how fast Tesla is moving, we might actually see more companies starting to come out to build and develop robots. We might actually see Boston Dynamic receiving more investment to move a lot faster in the development of robots. I mean, goodness, what happens when you can join one of these things with the next level intelligence of ChatGPT? And we know OpenAI is working on a lot of other AI programs that are said to be even more conscious of the world around them. What happens when you tie these two together? Now, according to the company, Optimus Generation 2 walks 30% faster than its predecessor and is 22 pounds lighter as well. The company has seamlessly put a heavy focus on the robot's dexterous hands, which features tactile sensors on each finger, allowing it to carefully handle objects like eggs. To Musk, it's an exceedingly important project for the car maker. During Tesla's bot update for shareholders in May, Musk claimed that the Optimus stuff is extremely underrated and that he was confident in predicting that the robot would account for a majority of Tesla long-term value. Long-term value. And it's ironic that the employees that are building this robot, programming this robot, are ultimately replacing themselves eventually. And isn't that the philosophy of mankind that we get so good at what we can do that eventually we can replace ourselves without even knowing it? We are the engine of our own defeat. And that in itself is is kind of kind of strange. Now, if most predictions are anything to go by, a reminder, his word means close to nothing. Optimus could hit a price of less than 20000 each and will soon start replacing production staffs at car makers' factories. And I can see why that would be a high focus for the Optimus robot. These factories that build cars, they're already operated largely by a lot of robotic machines. A lot of these inputs are operated by robotic machines. Robotic machines have a huge industry in the car making industry and other products around the world. There are some products that just need a robotic um, integration. A human can't do every job, especially thousands of times, hundreds of thousands of millions of times, like building semiconductors, 
robots have to do that intricate job. Don't get me wrong, humans have, might have an input here or there, but humans are the designer, they are the project lead, but microscopic details of technology is really a robotic machine job. Not to mention if you're edging for efficiency as well. This is why robots are becoming such an important part of so many industries that it's all about efficiency, cutting costs, speed, progress. Now, Tesla will cut costs in many ways. And if they use the Optimus robot to do it, that'll be a great investment for them. But even more incredibly, they'll save a lot of money off employees and they'll be able to raise prices and lower prices at a given. They'll be able to do whatever they want with their company. Now, what's really incredible about Tesla at the moment is that it's doing really great in all areas that investors like to see, but also the revenue. This year alone, they'll probably pull off over 100 billion, if not close to 100 billion in revenue alone. From the first quarter of this year, they're pulling off 23.3 billion. Second quarter, 20, 24.9 billion. Second quarter, 24.9 billion. And third quarter, 23.3 billion. Now, if they pull off like 25 billion in this quarter, 26 billion, that's getting them close to 100 billion throughout the entire year. Compare this with Apple and Amazon, it's not even close. But if you look across the company, it's actually really well organized and it's really clean. The EBITDA is incredibly high. Since last year, late 2022, and this was per quarter at the end of the year, it was 5 billion. Now it's around 3.3 billion. It's really positive, but free cash flow is actually really incredible as well, particularly in 2022. Investors were really loving that. Recently, it has gone down just a little bit, and I think that is due to the fact that they are focusing so heavily on things like the Cybertruck. They're also cutting costs to their vehicles, so they're getting more vehicles on the road. And you know that's really important for Tesla to get as many vehicles on the road as possible because that's as many robots on the road as possible. And they, at any moment, they can send out updates to these robots. But what's really incredible is how they've reduced the debt. The last few years, they've been lowering debt quite heavily, and they've been relying more on their revenue that they're generating on the cash that they have on hand. And for some time, since around late 2022, Tesla's had over 20 billion on cash, 26 billion right now on cash, free to invest, free for research and development, free to keep driving the company. And even more incredible is the capital expense. You can see they're investing quite a lot in R&D, especially per quarter. In the last quarter, they invested $1.16 in R&D alone. Capital, now CapEx is at $2.46 billion. This is rising because they are delivering more vehicles. They're spending more on capital expenditure. So they are expanding, so they are expanding their portfolio of delivering a lot of vehicles. But even more incredibly, if Tesla continues to grow like it's growing right now, you can tell year over year, this company is up 8.8%. In the last two years, it's up 30%. If it continues to do what it's doing, the market cap is no issue. You can actually sometimes expect this company to be somewhat undervalued comparing the revenue with market cap. This company can make that back in less than five years, especially at its growth rate. So essentially what Tesla is doing is that they're growing at 18 to 20% in the last two years on average. That's really phenomenal. And that's on average. That's if you average it out across the two years. Naturally, this is slowing, but it's expected to slow. What they're trying to do is diversify their means of income, not just on the cars, but on other things as well. But listen, that's it for today's video. Subscribe to see more. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.